Uh, back to the Republican tax plan here. So the Republicans have now released their tax plan, and it's got some good stuff and it's got some bad stuff. Basically, if you're in California and you own a, and you own a home, you're screwed. This is basically how this works. If you're anywhere else in the country, this plan is probably quite good for you. But if you are in California, you just get jobbed by this plan if you're in the upper tax bracket. So for people like me, I'm in top tax bracket in California. That means I am just going to get nailed. I would vote for this tax plan anyway because I think the tax plan is quite good. So here's what the tax plan does. It lowers the corporate tax rate from 35% to 20%. This is a good thing. It also lowers the, the pass-through tax rate on what they call S-corporations from close to 40% down to 25%, which is also a good thing because our Corporate tax rates are the highest in the industrialized world. They are higher than France. They are higher than Japan. They are higher than the UK. They are higher than Germany. Bring it down to 20% would put us right in the middle of the pack. That is a good thing. It also narrows the tax brackets. Right now, there are seven tax brackets. Uh, this would get rid of four of them. It would bring it down to, or it would get rid of three of them, rather. It would bring it down to four tax brackets as opposed to, as opposed to seven. It would actually negatively impact people who are making over $400,000 a year. Uh, if you were making over $400,000 a year, uh, then you are paying 39.6% in the, uh, you're pay sorry, if you're, you're paying, no matter what, you're paying 40% tax bracket. If you're making about $420,000 a year, this new program would lift that cap to $500,000 a year, but it would also make it that if you're making more than $400,000 a year, you're paying a 33%, you're paying a 35% tax as opposed to a 33% tax. So it raises taxes slightly for people in that tax bracket, but then increases the next station on the, on the belt. So if, you are, if you're making precisely $500,000, this is not necessarily a good deal for you. If you're making more than $500,000, then the deal is probably fine for you. You don't really lose much through it. Uh, if you are making below $200,000 a year, your taxes go down no matter what tax bracket you're in. If you make under $37,000 a year, your tax bracket goes down from 15 to 12. If you are making under $200,000 a year, your tax bracket goes down from 28 to 25. The capital gains and dividend tax rates stay exactly the same. The estate tax is basically chopped in half. So if you are right now, you pay the estate tax, I think, is evil. This idea the government gets to raid your, your coffin for cash. You die. The government immediately runs into your safe and just takes out the money that you've already paid taxes on. Pretty terrible. But well, right now, what this plan would do is to take the estate tax, which is 40% on estates above $5.5 million, and doubles it so that the estate tax only applies on estates above $11.2 million. And then in 2024, it just is eliminated completely. It just goes away completely, so no more estate tax, which of course is the proper solution considering that anybody who knows what they're doing with taxes simply signs a living will, and then they don't have to pay an estate tax anyway, right? A living will just allows you to essentially transfer your assets over before your death to your children, so that way they're not inheriting from you. It's only inheritance that, that gets screwed here. The GOP tax plan does repeal the deduction for state and local income and sales taxes. This is why I say if you're in California, you're screwed. Okay, now, I don't think this is a bad thing. I think it's a bad thing for me, right? I think I'm, I'm in trouble here because California has a 10% a state income tax, which is insane. Uh, so basically, the way that it used to work is that I would take that as a deduction against my federal tax. Now I can't do that anymore under the Republican tax plan. So basically, if I'm in the top tax bracket, or at least the portion of my income that's in the top tax bracket, I'm going to be paying 39.6% on that, and then I'm going to be paying an additional 10% on that from the state of California. Right, which is pretty insane. So I'm paying 50% of all that money to the state or federal government, which is pretty crazy, especially because, as I've said, I don't agree with tax plans that increase taxes on people who are wealthy because the people who are making a lot of money are also the people who are investing a lot of money, saving a lot of money, and allowing free commerce to flourish. That the, it also allows a deduction for property taxes, but it caps it at $10,000. So again, it punishes people in California. California has some pretty significant property taxes, even though it's been capped by Prop 13. In places like Massachusetts, which have a huge property tax, that is going to just destroy them. The purpose here, on a, on a political level, is to force a lot of the blue states to reconsider whether their taxes should be quite this high. And it is not fair that Texas has been basically paying the, paying the freight for California through this particular tax deduction. Republicans are going to curtail the deductions. This is according to the Wall Street Journal. Individuals take for state and local tax payments and the ones businesses get for the interest they pay on debt. But it doesn't charge the 401k savings accounts, which is good. Uh, it also calls for leaving the top individual tax rate at 40 percent, but pushing the income threshold to one million for married couples. Uh, there, there are uh, some holes that I think Democrats are going to try and exploit here. The holes they're going to try and exploit are, again, the, the failure to take into account state income taxes. 
and also that it gets rid of deductions for medical expenses. So people who have HSAs don't really have to worry about it, but if you have a serious medical problem and you're paying lots of money and now you can't take that deduction in the same number as you were before, that is going to hurt you. And that's where the Democrats are going to attack. They're going to say, you're killing Obamacare already, and now you're trying to take away my deduction for the medical care. Why are you punishing people who have health problems? That's where the Democrat line of attack is likely to come. Uh, so as I say, uh, there are a couple of political landmines. So it, it also, also, speaking of people what's going to hurt in California and, and Massachusetts, the bill limits the home mortgage interest deduction. So right now you can take a home mortgage interest deduction for loans up to a million dollars. Now it would only be deductible on loans up to five hundred thousand dollars. Well, that's not just you know that's not just rich people in the state of California. Basically, any home in a major city in the state of California, any single family home in the state of California, you're taking a loan above five hundred thousand dollars. Right? The average price for a three bedroom in in like L.A. is probably seven fifty. So that's going to hurt some people who are middle class. Uh, and because of the larger standard deduction, so the standard deduction has gone up. That's kind of the the max deduction you can give. Fewer people would have a tax incentive to make charitable deductions. So you used to give charitable deductions in order to increase your itemization. Uh, that is going to go away a little bit. Life insurers lose some tax breaks. Bank with assets exceeding $50 billion would get no deduction. Tax exempt, th this, this is good, actually. Tax exempt bonds can no longer get a tax deduction um, for, uh, for building professional sports stadiums. So no more subsidizing the, the stupid L.A. football teams to build more stadiums. No more of that. Overall, this is quite a good tax plan. Uh, I think that it, it does pick and choose in some areas that I don't exactly love. It retains the earned income tax credit, which is basically a welfare program. Uh, it also increases the child tax credit, but not as much as people like Mike Lee and Marco Rubio have suggested. But under current law, a married couple with two children making sixty grand would get a $13,000 standard deduction and four personal exemptions worth $4,100, $4,150. That means they pay taxes on thirty grand of taxable income, which means that they are only going to be paying a, a very small tax bill as opposed to a significantly larger tax bill. So bottom line is that it does lower taxes for virtually everyone except the people who are at the top of the income spectrum and people living in states like California and Massachusetts. Will Trump have a majority for this? Um, you know, it's going to be difficult for him to cobble together a majority for anything, particularly because there's the, the say no to anything Trump wants caucus now, which may or may not include people like John McCain, Jeff Flake, Lisa Murkowski, Susan Collins. We'll see how bad the blowback is from the Democrats. What's interesting about this proposal is because Trump is not actually giving tax breaks to people at the upper end of the income spectrum like me, uh, it's going to be difficult for the Democrats to say that he's attempting to create tax cuts for the rich at the expense of people lower in the income scale, because that's simply is not true. Okay, so there is your, your tax breakdown. Now, I want to talk a little bit more about immigration and President Trump's plans thereon, where he is right and why he's right, but not for quite the right reasons. But for that, you're going to have to go over to dailywire.com. I have a lot to talk about. So